Want to learn about breast cancer genomic tests? Not genetics, genomics? We will teach you all about it. If you've been diagnosed recently with a small, early, favorable breast cancer, for some, there are sophisticated tests called genomic assays. These cutting edge tests can take a little deeper look into your cancer cells to give us a better idea about how to best treat your unique breast cancer. They do not apply to all, but it's so important to know about them. In this lesson, I'm gonna tell you what genomic assays are and the information that they provide. I'm also going to tell you how genomic tests differ from genetic tests. There's a lot of confusion there. I'm gonna give you some clarity on that. I'm gonna share with you who may benefit from or be eligible for a genomic assay for their breast cancer. And I'm gonna go over the most common genomic assays in breast cancer available today. So let's get started. So what are genomic tests? Well, these new cutting edge tests are a leap forward in our ability to identify in early stage breast cancer whether or not you may or may not benefit from chemotherapy. These genomic tests in a few patients can help us determine whether or not you might be able to avoid radiation therapy after a lumpectomy for DCIS, which is a precancerous condition. And in an even smaller group of patients, it can give us some information on whether or not you can avoid 10 years of hormonal therapy for an invasive breast cancer and have five years of hormonal therapy. So let me tell you about pathology. Sounds boring, but it's really important if you have breast cancer. Whenever you are diagnosed with a breast cancer, after a biopsy, or you have the tumor removed, the pathologist look at your cancer cells under the microscope and look at the type of breast cancer. They look at the grade, how angry each cell looks versus less angry, high grade or low grade, and tumor receptor, receptors, which are critical information to guide us how to best treat your cancer to keep it from coming back and threatening your life. Genomic assays takes this a step further. It looks deeper into your cancer cells, looking at more genetic changes and RNA changes and protein changes and all kinds of things to tell us whether your cancer is a higher risk for coming back and can give us some information about how to treat your cancer that we otherwise wouldn't know. Next, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the difference between genomic assays and genetic testing. And I'll get to that in just a moment. So what is the difference between a genomic assay and genetic testing? Well, medical terms are confusing, and that's why we created the Breast Cancer School for Patients. I've covered genomic tests, a deeper look inside a tumor if you have breast cancer. I'm now going to pivot and talk about genetic testing the BRCA mutation, the breast cancer gene. These are terms for a broken copy of a gene. We all are born with tens of thousands of genes. But if you pick up a broken copy of one of these genes, the BRCA mutation, and there are other cancer-causing genes that we can test for now, but I'm gonna talk about the BRCA mutation. When you are conceived, from either your mother or father, you might pick up a copy, a broken copy, a mutated copy of the BRCA gene. So if you pick up a broken copy, you pick up the BRCA mutation. And men and women carry these mutations equally. We talk about it more in women because it's really related to breast cancer. But if you pick up the BRCA mutation, that broken mutation is in every cell of your body from birth all the way into adulthood. If you carry that mutation, we then can predict that you have a lifetime increased risk of developing breast cancer up to 60-80%. A lifetime increased risk of developing ovarian cancer, lifetime risk of 20-40%. to 40%. It's a really deadly one. If you're a woman, 
you have an increased risk of pancreatic cancer and melanoma. If you're a man, you have an increased risk of breast cancer. It's extremely rare in men, but it can increase that risk in men to about eight or 10% in their lifetime. Increased risk of prostate cancer, melanoma, pancreatic cancer. So, genetic testing is when we identify something that's someone that has risk, risk factors or red flags breast cancer at an early age, strong family history of breast and ovarian cancer, or pancreatic cancer, or prostate cancer. Take our video lesson at the Breast Cancer School for Patients on BRCA genetic testing. Our video is very thorough, we have great information and links to the best sites. So, genomic assays, look into your tumor if you have breast cancer. Genetic testing, identifying someone that may carry a broken gene that's been running in their family possibly for thousands of years that identifies them as an increased risk for developing breast cancer and other types of cancer. Next, I'm going to tell you the specific situations in which today we use genomic assays and you can see whether or not they may apply to you. So will I benefit from a genomic assay for my breast cancer? It is important for me to share with you that not all breast cancer specialists embrace genomic assays in their practice of medicine. Genomic assays are becoming more and more adopted nationwide, integrated into treatment guidelines, and they really are becoming commonplace. But it is possible that you may qualify for a gen genomic assay and your physicians never talk about it. So, this is why we made this lesson for the Breast Cancer School for Patients, so you can engage your breast cancer specialist to make sure that it is on the table if it's appropriate for you. So, I'm gonna go through three common scenarios. I mentioned them earlier. The most common scenario is if you are newly diagnosed with an invasive breast cancer, a small tumor, generally no cancer in the lymph nodes, but in some situations, these, these tests can be used if you have a small amount of cancer in one, two, or three months. Most importantly, if you're estrogen receptor positive, it means your tumor is responsive to hormonal therapy. 80% of invasive breast cancers are. And HER2 negative, which really still suggests no chemotherapy. So in this very favorable situation, early stage breast cancer, Genomic assays can look deeper into those cells and give us a little bit more information to determine, number one, if you're at a much higher risk of this cancer coming back and threatening your life. And in that situation, it might help predict that you will benefit from chemotherapy, even though everything else doesn't suggest chemotherapy, to lessen the risk of that cancer to your life. So in some situations, it can point to chemotherapy when you otherwise may not be pursuing chemotherapy in your treatment because you had a genomic assay. A second common situation is that your tumor looks favorable and you do a genomic assay to see whether it points to the chemotherapy or not. And it, the majority of these situations point that your tumor is a generally low risk, a very, very favorable tumor and you will benefit from hormonal therapy and there's really no benefit from chemotherapy. So it really confirms that you can make a decision not to do chem chemotherapy in a, the most definitive way in today's world of breast cancer care. There is a situation where you get results sort of in the middle. It's a piece of information, but it doesn't really point in one direction or the other. And it's not uncommon, so you just need to be aware of that. So that's the situation, early stage breast cancer, invasive breast cancer. DCIS, a precancer, we usually treat it with a lumpectomy, take the tumor out with good margins, and generally most women will have radiation to the breast to lessen the chance that anything grows back in that breast. Maybe there's some DCI cells left in the breast, although we tell you we got them all out, that might grow in the future. So radiation reduces that risk. Genomic assays can play a role and look deeper into the DCIS cells to kind of get an idea whether those cells are a little bit more aggressive and or less aggressive. And 
It's not used that often in this situation, but more and more over time. And there are other developing genomic assays for DCIS for this purpose that will come out in the near future. But if you have DCIS and really, really, really want to avoid radiation, then a genomic assay can sometimes point, hey, this tumor is at higher risk of coming back and you really benefit from radiation. It can help you make that decision with your radiation oncologist. But if that genomic test comes back, hey, this is a very favorable tumor as far as we can tell, has a low risk of growing back, then it gives you some information that might point you in the direction in consultation with your radiation oncologist that you might be able to have a lumpectomy and no radiation and follow the breast very carefully. A third situation that's common with genomic assays in breast cancer today is that most women with hormo undergo hormonal therapy for an invasive breast cancer, early stage breast cancer, take the drug for 10 years now. But there's a genomic assay that might be able to predict whether there's little benefit from beyond five years, so take it for year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The way to think about that is if you're taking hormonal therapy after four, up to four or five years and you're struggling with it, it's making your life miserable, you've done things with your medical oncologist to try to ameliorate those symptoms, and you really are like, I'm done with this drug at five years. There's a genomic test that might point to whether your breast cancer is a higher risk for coming back if you stop genomic, excuse me, stop hormonal therapy. And that might point you to continue taking those drugs because it really lessens the risk of your cancer coming back threatening your life and dying of that breast cancer. But that test, if you're struggling with those medications, may say it's a low risk. It might be reassuring that you're willing to take that risk and stop the drug and go forward and improve the quality of your life. Next, I'm going to tell you about the most common genomic assays today. So what are the most common breast cancer genomic assays available in the United States? Well, the situation of invasive breast cancer may be helping determine whether or not you benefit from chemotherapy or not. The most common genomic assay is an Oncotype DX assay. Less used, but also backed up by very good information and data is a mammoprint genomic test and an endopredict genomic test. The situation where you have DCIS and are trying to determine whether you might be able to avoid radiation after a lumpectomy. An oncotype DCIS test is the most commonly utilized test for this. There are more tests coming available in the near future for this purpose. And in the situation where a patient's trying to determine with their medical oncologist whether they can avoid the extra five years of 10 years of hormonal therapy. The breast cancer index is an FDA approved test for this purpose. All of this information about genomic tests is available on our website and links to all of the best sites to give you information about genomic testing and where to find genomic testing is all available on the Breast Cancer School for Patients. Breast cancer genomic assays are not appropriate for everyone, but may play a role in about 25 to 30 percent of newly diagnosed patients with breast cancer. These tests actually define what we call personalized medicine, which means giving you exactly the treatments that you need not over-treating you, but also not under-treating you. At the Breast Cancer School for Patients, we encourage you to engage your breast cancer specialist to see whether or not a genomic assay may play a role in your treatment decisions for your unique breast cancer. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.